I heard a familiar voice at a restaurant we were at for our daughter's birthday. That voice and the way of speaking were undoubtedly my husband's, who was supposed to be on a business trip. Sorry, I thought I had made a reservation at a fancy restaurant. I messed up big time. Don't worry about it. I'm happy anywhere as long as I'm with you. Thanks, you're so sweet. God, I love you. Their conversation sounded like something out of lovey dovey couple. There was no doubt it was his affair in progress. Unaware of my presence, he continued processing his love. My precious wife passed away, you know. I was able to recover because of you. Holding the hand of his girlfriend, he earnestly spoke to her. Marry me. Let's be happy together. At that moment, my anger reached its peak. Precious wife, she passed away. What the heck is she talking about? Your wife is right here. Overtime and working on weekends were all lies. Proposing to his girlfriend on our daughter's birthday is just unforgivable. My husband, who had been betraying us, would face reckoning the next day. My name is Nala. I'm a working wife in my sixth year of marriage. After graduating from college, I focused on my career at a major bank. And before I knew it, I was in my late twenties without a boyfriend. Freaking out, I joined the local singles party with my friends, and that's where I met the man who would become my husband. Kyle was easygoing and had a positive impression. I was over the moon when he asked me out. After a year of going out, he popped a question, "Babe, I'll make you the happiest wife. So, marry me." Oh my God! Yes, I love you so much. And so, we got engaged. After that, we went to announce the news to my parents, who were as happy as us. Then it was his family's turn, but his mother had already passed away, so there was only his father. As we headed to Dave's place. Kyle mentioned something about him for the first time. I have to admit, I'm not very comfortable around him. Oh, why? He's pretty stern and used to give me a hard time when I was younger. I see. I had no idea. He sounded nervous, so I tensed up a little as we approached the house. Contrary to my imagination, Dave gave me a warm welcome. While he seemed tough, he treated me with courtesy. Nala, he can be the hurtful sometimes, but please take care of him. Don't worry, Dave. I'm used to it by now. Ha ha ha. Kyle, you're still in the family now. Take responsibility and be the good husband to her. I know, Dad. And so, our first introduction to the in-laws ended. Afterward, we got married, moved into a new apartment, and began our newlywed life. Right after we started living together, I realized that he couldn't do any housework. Well, he used to live alone, so it was more like he had no intention of doing it. Dirty laundry would be all over the floor, and he wouldn't even bother to clear the dishes after eating. I asked him to help with housework once. But he simply dismissed it. Isn't that a wife's job when you get married? Are you serious asking me to do it? I was totally stunned and couldn't say anything back to him. Since then, no matter how much I complained, he never improved his attitude. About two years into this kind of life, I found out I was pregnant. He was overjoyed. And look forward to discovering whether it was a boy or a girl. My parents were thrilled to hear the news too, and Dave said, "Take it easy on yourself from now and have a healthy baby." 
Our child was blessed by everyone, which made me happier than anything. However, when my morning sickness kicked in, Hyo still didn't show any sign of helping me with housework. I was so frustrated, but I had to push myself to do the chores no matter how unwell I felt. When I was eight months pregnant, he surprised me with a sudden statement. Hey, Han, I'm thinking about taking paternity leave. Huh, really? Yeah, you know, my company's Scandinavian, the lot of my colleagues are from there. I see them taking leave and being involved in the caring of their newborns. It's pretty cool. As you may know, Scandinavia is one of the most advanced regions when it comes to the family support system. Learning that he was aiming to become an involved dad made me happy. Thanks, love. It means a lot to me. I was feeling overwhelmed. It'd be great if you could help with babysitting and housework. Leave them to me. I believed that he would change his way once our baby arrived. I was still hopeful back then. Later, I gave birth to a healthy girl named Emma. Kyle took three months of paternity leave, which was scheduled to start at the same time as the baby was born. However, he still didn't do anything contrary to my expectations. He would hold Emma and crew on her, but as soon as her diaper was wet or she started crying from hunger, he'd hand her over to me. Her diaper must be wet and uncomfortable. Chant it for her. No way. I don't want to do something so nasty. Fine. At least vacuum then. Ugh. Seriously? I don't know how to do it. So better you do it. He didn't make any effort to learn how to take care of our baby. That alone helped with housework. I was exhausted after giving birth and sleep deprived from the crying baby throughout the night. When I was busy doing everything, he was just lounging at home, playing with his phone. Sometimes he'd go out somewhere, eat out the lawn or shop, then then return. I was getting upset, wondering what he was on paternity leave for in the first place. I even thought about talking to his dad about it, but I decided to hold my tongue to avoid unnecessary conflicts. Emma grew rapidly, and Kyle returned to work after the paternity leave. I took a year off from work and planned to put her in daycare when I started working again. Time passed, and Emma turned three. We might have appeared to be a happy family at first glance. But my frustration had been building up for the past few years. Kyle, as usual, wouldn't lift a finger when he came to housework and childcare. Moreover, for the past six months or so, he'd become increasingly busy with work, often working late on weekdays. He even claimed to have to go in on weekends, which was supposed to be the only time he could spend time with Emma. Since I had been handling everything related to her, she had naturally become attached to me. Still, I thought I had to support Kyle because he was busy with work, so that I somehow managed things day by day. As Emma's fourth birthday approached. I brought up an idea when he came home late one night. Hey, honey, I want to talk to you about something. What? I'm tired, you know. He replied with a hint of annoyance, but I continued with a serious expression. Emma's birthday is next Wednesday. I really want us to celebrate as a family. So can you try to come home early? No way. I'm swamped with work right now. Anyway, I've got a business trip that day. Oh, come on! You've been spending no time with her for a while now. She misses you. Yeah, right. She's always glued to you, calling for her mummy. That's because you. Before I could raise my voice, he interrupted, looking annoyed. Let's drop it. I don't want to argue about it anymore. 
He headed off to take a shower. Left behind, I was utterly shocked. Then Emma's birthday arrived. Kyle had gone on a business trip early in the morning. When I asked Emma what she wanted to eat for her birthday, she energetically replied, "Kids meal." She loved it at a nearby chain restaurant. I agreed to her request, and after picking her up from daycare, we headed there. However, it was closed for renovation. Well, we have no choice. Let's go to a different location. And so we ended up going to another one a bit farther away. The place was crowded, and we had to wait for about twenty minutes before being seated. I'm really hungry. You can eat as much as you want. We'll get some cake too. While having a conversation, I looked up, and my heart leaped out of my chest. The man sitting diagonally across with his back to us looked just like Kyle. Emma's meal was brought to her, and a pasta dish was placed in front of me. I stealthily observed the other table. Then I overheard their conversation. I'm sorry, Monica. I made a reservation at a fancy restaurant, but I must up the date, and now we are here. The voice and the way of speaking were undoubtedly Kyle, who was supposed to be on a business trip. Refer to us, Monica," said. "Don't worry about it. I'm happy anywhere as long as I'm with you. Thanks. You're so sweet." I was sure it was the scene of his affair. I operated my phone nervously and pressed the record button. His voice was being recorded on the phone. I had planned to have this conversation in a proper restaurant, but what is it? As you know, my previous wife passed away. I was able to recover because of you. Oh, baby! Holding her hands, he said with a serious tone, "So, Monica Reed, marry me. Let's be happy together." Her eyes welled up as she responded, "Kyle, let's be happy together, for your previous wife's sake too." At that moment, my anger reached its peak. Previous wife, she passed away. What the heck is he talking about? Your wife is right here. Overtime and working on weekends were all lies. Proposing to his girlfriend on our daughter's birthday is just unforgivable. Mommy, what's wrong? You look scary. Emma's voice made me snap out of it. Ah,、uh, it's nothing. Here, have some cake. I looked up again, but they had already left the restaurant. After celebrating her birthday with a forced smile, we returned home. And I took action immediately. The next day, after finishing work, I waited for Kyle to return home. The door swung open, and he casually said, "I'm home." I stood in the hallway and immediately started acting on my plan. "Welcome back." I went to the trouble of coming back from my grave for you. Huh? He looked perplexed. Grave. What are you talking about? Well, you said I passed away, right? What? He still didn't seem to get it, so I played back the recording from the previous day. My previous wife passed away. I was able to recover because of you. So Monica Reed, marry me. Let's be happy together. I had edited the recording to be loud and clear. His voice echoed through the hallway. At that moment, his face turned pale. What the heck is this? Were you in that restaurant yesterday? Obviously. That's where I heard you saying this. God damn it! This is an invasion of privacy. Proposing bully in a public place, and now you're talking about privacy. But wait, 
What's the deal? I'm supposed to have passed away without knowing it? That, that's... I sighed as he stammered. You know, divorce is inevitable after this. Going to claim alimony from you, so be prepared. Divorce? Alimony? Hold on. Do you have a problem with that? I grimaced, and he blurred it out with a red face. It, uh, it was just a joke. A joke? Right, there's nothing going on between me and her. You can't just come after me for alimony without evidence. Then, a couple figures appeared from the living room. What? Monica? What are you doing here? And that too? Monica was glaring at him with an intense expression. And Dave was standing with his arms crossed, showing his anger. After I got home from the restaurant, I searched for Monica Reed on social media and contacted her, revealing everything. Judging from the conversation, I had thought she didn't know the truth. I was right. She was terribly shaken and apologized to me. I accept her apology and asked her to help me. I also explained the situation to Dave, who rushed over. I left Emma with one of my mommy friends and ambushed Kyle with them. Jeez, Monica. He muttered as if in a daze. Then she started screaming at him. You said you were lonely because your wife passed away, right? And she's still alive. And there's even a child? What's up with that? The, the that's... They're proposed shamelessly even though you're already married. I was a fool to accept this garbage. She threw the ring box at him. It hit him square in the face, and he crouched down in pain. Ouch, what the heck are you doing? I'm going to sue you for marriage fraud. I'm coming after you for tons of money, so you better not rum. She huffed and puffed. Kyle was still crouching and stared her up in bewilderment. The next to speak was Dave. You're really a fool. You betrayed Nala and Emma, and on top of that, you deceived a young woman? You're an absolute idiot who has strayed from the path? It's as pathetic as it gets. He then approached Kyle and delivered a powerful slap. There was a sharp sound, and Kyle groaned. He writhed in pain, clutching his face but not uttering a word. I watched him with a cold gaze. Come on, get up. First, apologize to Nala. Dave's face was contorted in anger as he pulled him up. Tears welled up in Kyle's eyes as he began to apologize. I am so, so sorry, Nala. Please, forgive me. Please say you forgive me. Otherwise, my old man's going to... I don't even want to think about it. He trembled and hung his head down, and I gave him a tom lashing. Who would forgive you? I don't want a husband who doesn't do any housework or child care, and on top of that, cheats without a care in the world. We're definitely getting divorced, even if I have to fight in court. I'll make sure I get custody and alimony. Oh, no. He looked dazed while Dave wrapped him by his scrubby's neck and dragged him out of the house. Then Monica took my hand and apologized again. I, too, said I apologize for my husband's behavior. Later, my divorce with Kyle was finalized, and I gained custody of Emma. I claim... $130,000 in lump sum as an alimony for his infidelity and child support. Apparently, Monica also managed to get some compensation from him. Of course, he couldn't afford such a large sum, so Dave lent him the money and paid it all. 
He was furious about a whole incident and made Kyle quit his job. He arranged for him to work at an acquaintance's forestry company. Kyle's currently deep in the woods, cutting trees and repaying the debt to Dave. He's never done manual labor before and is put to hard work under a younger boss. He's said to be tall in a wit to desperation. I have no sympathy for him whatsoever. On the other hand, I used the alimony to move and start a new life with Emma. I was worried that she might miss her dad. But she's been smiling and said, as long as mommy's with me, it's okay. I make sure she sees Dave regularly, and he showers her with some gifts every time. I'm looking forward to watching her grow and living life with a positive attitude. Wait, William is standing on his own. Come here and see it. I was shocked, and a strange voice came out of me. No way. Well, what are you talking about? Huh? My husband was shocked too. My father-in-law looked at us with kind eyes and said, Whoa. Let us go camping. My name is Luna, a 55-year-old housewife. My husband, Harry, is an ordinary businessman of the same age. My son, Ronald, also a businessman, is married and is the father of a little boy who is not yet one year old. His wife is a very nice person and our families get along well. The only problem was the conflict with my husband's family. It goes back to when our marriage was finalized. I was 27 years old and I met Harry at my workplace. I had heard that he had grown up in a very normal family, but when it came time to marry him, I found out that he actually came from a very wealthy family and that the rest of his family had brilliant backgrounds. His parents had a successful business career running a trading company and his brother Fred, two years younger than my husband, had graduated from a very prestigious national university and had started a successful IT venture company since then. Fred was married before Harry, and his wife was also a career woman. When it was time to meet his family, So, you are the future wife of Harry? You must be happy to be the bride of a wealthy family like ours. That's what my mother-in-law Molly said to me. Moreover, my brother-in-law's wife and mother-in-law seemed to be on the same wavelength and got along very well. I felt a little uneasy, but Harry said, Don't worry. My mother hated me for a long time and I hardly socialized with my family at all. I believed my husband's words and we got married. After we were married, Molly was always sarcastic to me. When I gave birth to my first son by cesarean section after a difficult delivery, she said, Cesarean section is such an easy way to give birth. Fred's wife had a natural birth, but it was so easy. I'm sure a well-educated career woman has a different quality in what she does. When my son went to elementary school, Fred's son is going to a famous private elementary school. My husband is unperturbed, but one day he told me this story. I've always been compared to my brother. I was just average in everything I did, but my brother was smart, athletic, and could do anything. So my mother's only concern was Fred. She always put him first in everything. My only escape was my father. He treated me and my brother equally. But my mother didn't like that and I think that's when my parents' marriage started to deteriorate. My husband is right. My father-in-law William is a very gentle and kind man. When Molly said terrible things to me, he would casually send me follow-up emails and sometimes he even apologized to me. It was William who gave my son a beautiful school bag when he started elementary school and it was William who supported our family emotionally and financially when my husband failed at his job and was temporarily transferred to another region. My father-in-law retired from running his trading company at the age of 75. Molly stepped down at the same time too. And here we are today. I have come to appreciate William more than words can express. 
But then, William suffered a blow to his tailbone. He slipped on the stairs at home. Worried, I went to my husband's parents' house and found Molly and Fred. And Molly said, Oh, William is so careless. He's going to have to rest for a while. So you know, I'm thinking about you moving in with us. Or are you talking about us? Harry asked, and Molly answered, No, who would live with a couple like you who are so normal at anything? With Fred and his wife, who are the best at everything, I don't have to worry about my future anymore. That's what she said. And so, my brother-in-law's family moved into my parents-in-law's house. Our house and my husband's parents' house are about 10 minutes away by car. The house is very nice, like a wealthy family's house, and there is even a small pond in the garden, so it looks like a little castle. William likes to do the gardening, and there were many colorful flowers in the garden. Soon after they moved in together, I went to my husband's parents' house to see how things were going. When I went to William's room, to my surprise, he was lying in a corner of the dimly lit walk-in closet. Not only that, the study that William had used before his injury was now being used by my husband's brother as if he owned it. I complained to Molly about the situation. Uh, Molly, I think you're treating William very badly. Oh, I can use the room for Fred's work. William won't use it, so I'm just putting it to good use. But that doesn't stop me from feeling sorry for him in that dingy place. I got angry. And Molly got even angrier. I'm using a place that's not being used, making the most of the space. Can't you even understand that? I couldn't talk back anymore and went back to William. I'm sorry to worry you. William said apologetically. No, don't be sorry. Is there anything I can help you with? Then William looked a bit lonely and said, If you could do me a favor, would you water the flowers in my garden? I looked and saw that the flowers in the garden, which were supposed to be beautiful, were limp. Fortunately, I also enjoyed gardening, so I readily agreed. Then I visited my husband's parents' house every day to do the gardening, as well as take care of William. Molly and Fred and his wife looked annoyed, but I couldn't be bothered with that when I thought about William. A few weeks later, William celebrated his birthday. Molly informed us that William was turning 80 and that she was having a family birthday party. Harry and I were also invited, and it was supposed to be a fun birthday party. When we arrived at the house that day, the party had already started, and Fred and his wife and Molly were chatting about something. But we couldn't find William there. Hey, where is William? Molly answered smilingly. Huh? He is at his usual place, it's so hard to bring William's bed. William told me to leave him alone and have fun without him. I was mortified, then I got angry. But that didn't mean you could leave William alone. This is a celebration for William, right? Then Molly looked annoyed. Then why don't you guys just go to William's? I don't like that dingy place. Okay. I said, and so did my husband. Mom, you are so awful. He murmured sadly. Then we both went to William's. You came to see me? William was very happy to see us. Happy birthday. I hope you get well soon and recover from your injuries. We celebrated William's birthday in the dimly lit room. William was delighted with the yellow umbrella we had given him to use when he gets well, and he looked at it happily for a long time. After his birthday, I took care of the flowers in the garden every day. William remained bedridden. Then one day, something happened that made me shocked. Early in the morning, when I arrived at my husband's parents' house, Molly and Fred and his wife appeared in front of me, carrying several large suitcases. Well, take care of William, will you? I didn't get what was going on. We're going on a week-long trip to Guam. You can tell by looking at us, you really are dumb, she said. I didn't know you were going on a trip, I answered. I don't have to tell you, you were at home every day anyway taking care of William. Huh? Well, what about William? You can take care of him, I can't take William with us. We're tired of taking care of him every day. Are we not even allowed to have a break every once in a while? 
Molly got angry. Fred and his wife were just nodding and agreeing with her. I was beyond angry and disgusted. Ha, right then, take care. I said this with a lot of sarcasm and accepted the house key they gave me. I'm looking forward to being abroad for the first time in a long time. Molly and Fred and his wife went off, ignoring my glare. After they departed I hurriedly finished the gardening and went into William's room. I'm sorry Luna. William's face is downcast. Please don't say that, take your time. I set a small table next to the bed with William's favorite foods. Then I invited my husband to join us for dinner. It was a very delicious and enjoyable dinner. Then I noticed William's eyes were tearing up when he was sipping his soup. Is everything alright? A something doesn't suit your taste? I was worried but William said quietly. No, you always treated me well and I'm really glad to have a good daughter-in-law like you. Molly and Fred and his wife are always having a lively dinner downstairs while William is alone and lonely upstairs every day. Just the thought of it made my heart clench in my chest. The next day was a day off so my husband and I decided to stay the night. The three of us chatted and enjoyed ourselves until William fell asleep. The next morning, when I saw the garden, I was surprised to see William standing there on his own taking care of the flowers. Oh, um, William? Good morning, Luna. The William was doing the gardening as if nothing had happened. I hurriedly called my husband. Honey, William is standing there on his own. Come quickly. I was so surprised that my voice became strange. What are you talking about? My father must be bedridden. My husband too, who has come scurrying to the edge of the house, reacted like me. Ha oh. He was speechless. William looked at us kindly and said softly, Well, let us go camping. We were surprised, but William remained calm. He asked us to prepare for our overnight trip. We were so surprised that we just did as we were told, and went back to our house to prepare. William was still standing on his own after all and looking very well. Could you drive for us? We headed for a campground in the mountains. We put our bags down, settled in, and asked William. Well, what the hell is going on? William chuckled and said, I'm sorry I tricked you. I was a little skeptical. I guess it was right after we moved in together. I overheard a secret conversation between Molly and Fred. It went something like this. William is going to be bitch ridden if he keeps this up. It's really annoying. Molly said, Then, there's a good facility. We'll put him there. He won't last long anyway. We can change the owner of the land and the house to us before Dad passes away, and if we can get him to write a will, it would be perfect. You would get a fair share too, Mom. Dad is bedridden, and he'll be convinced in no time if I talk to him. Fred said, that's a good idea, and the sooner we make this clear, the better. We'll do it after we get back from our trip to Guam with William's pension money. Okay. At that point, William knew what they were planning to do after he passed away and he got to know about the Guam trip. This is no longer a family. William thought so. He decided not to give any of the land, house, and property to Molly and Fred. William decided to pretend to be bedridden to fool Molly and Fred and walked around the yard at night when they were asleep to keep his legs strong so that he would not completely lose the ability to walk. And then he decided to see who would get the inheritance. William said proudly, I've been waiting for my chance ever since I pretended to be bedridden. I want you, too, to inherit everything. Molly and Fred returned home a week later after enjoying their trip to Guam. By then, William had consulted a lawyer and changed the title of the house and land to my husband. He also completed the will regarding the inheritance. Then, Molly, Fred, and his wife returned home. Oh, wait, what's wrong? They were shocked to see William strolling around. William just said to them, I need to talk to you about the future. Come to the living room. William called all the family members to the living room. William, why are you standing on your own? William answered. 
I recovered a long time ago, and I've been doing rehabilitation work secretly in the middle of the night when you're all asleep so that I won't lose the ability to walk. I know everything you're up to. Haha? Huh? Molly was shocked. You would have put me in an institution and tried to take the land and house for yourselves and inherit everything from me. Molly and Fred became pale. It must be some kind of misunderstanding. I'm sure of it because I heard you and Molly talking in my room with my own ears. I'm sure you enjoyed your trip to Guam with a pension I'd saved up. I found out about that with just one look at the bank book. William glared at them. First of all, I've decided to give this house on land to my eldest son, Harry. And he spread the deeds on the table. What? Molly and Fred froze, their faces pale. But there's more. Listen. William did not care about their reaction and continued his talk. I've decided to ask Harry and his wife to take care of my estate, and I've drawn up a will. Why? I'm sorry to say this, but Harry is an ordinary businessman and we can manage the money better than him. After all, I run a company. Fred finally interrupted. Managing money can indeed be difficult. That's why I made sure to introduce him to a good lawyer and tax accountant. But William, Fred is better at everything than Harry. Molly got insistent, but William said, Fred, isn't your company on the verge of collapse? How did he know that? A friend of mine from my days as he, a business owner is well informed and he told me that your company is looking for a large loan but that you don't think you can repay it. Huh? That William's suggestion, Fred began to look like he was about to cry. Come to think of it, a reporter from a business newspaper came to interview me the other day. You said something about investments. With that remark, my husband held out a business card from a well-known newspaper on the desk. Then, that reporter wanted me to tell you that he'd already backed it up. What does it mean, Fred? William asked, and Fred seemed to have given up. It's true, I made a bad investment. I got the money from the investors and when I handed it over to him, he disappeared. They took the money and ran. I wanted to sell the real estate I was going to inherit from you and use it to pay off the debt. Fred confessed and looked down at the floor. Fred, you said you were going to make money. What about my share? Oh, wait, mom, you had invested in it too? My husband looked up to the heavens. I invested $300,000 because I heard it would surely make money. I told the same story to my friends, and they must have invested about $200,000 in total. So, $500,000 in total? I was shocked too. What kind of a company owner are you when you can't even recognize such a scam? I can't trust my fortune to someone like that. Shame on you. Molly, I knew about your investment of $300,000. I checked all the bank books when you went on our trip to Guam. You will take the responsibility, and you will leave this house. I can't do that, William. I only have this house to live in. It was you and Fred who neglected your precious home. Dad, please help us. William, please. Ignoring their desperate begging, William left the room. After that, Fred had to pay back his investors and let go of the company. He tried to start another company, but it failed because he lost all trust in society. Fred's wife would never forgive him for such a situation, and they divorced soon after. Even with Molly, with whom he had been so close, when they no longer had any money, they ended up fighting terribly. In the end, they had a terrible quarrel. William and Molly also divorced. When they divorced, their property was divided, but most of it had to be used to pay off Molly's friends who invested, so there was a very little left over. Molly, who got in financial trouble after the divorce, managed to live with a little allowance William gives her every month. But all we hear are complaints. She has no family, no money, and lives lonely on her own. The other day, I met Molly passing through my neighborhood. She was still arrogant. Living alone is so much easier. But I could see her loneliness. Harry and me, we moved to William's house. 
I enjoy gardening with William every day. In addition, our son has a new family member. This time it was a girl and everyone was happy. And the happiest of all is William. His grandson comes to visit every weekend with his great grandson. When it rains, William happily holds up the yellow umbrella we gave him the other day and goes out for a walk. The sight of William, like that, makes me feel happy every day.